Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are you guys doing? This is the last session, is it? Okay. We try to be a little bit, you know, entertaining. Can we do that? <laughs> so that you guys can, you know, have a little bit of relaxation. Anyway, um, my name is Vivi, as when you just introduced, and I'm very happy to um, be discussing such an interesting topic in data journalism, data news, with two of the experts in the area. Um, how, how about we do this? You know, I give you guys a little bit room to just introduce a little bit more about yourself, and, and then in the end, and, and then we can off the discussion. Absolutely. So, my name is AK Ahuja, uh, Managing Director at Crescendo uh, Agency. We're a full service ad agency, and we incorporate human intelligence uh, into advertising. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, I handle our near marketing division and uh, lead that effort. So look forward to being here and telling you guys some more. Okay, let me just uh, add one um, one sentence. AK is known as master of the mind, right, for, for his company. So uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, hi, I'm master of nothing. Um, I'm Scott Button. I am a news reporter for NBC. Uh, I cover technology and business here in Silicon Valley. Um, and so, uh, as the last panel talked about, and, and we'll talk about it, it's, it's uh, I'm on TV every day and, and have been for many years, but it's, it's shifting very much to, uh, to phones and, and tablets and, and computers and everything like that. Uh, so, um, we, we reach probably more people now on, on devices than we do even on television. Exactly. And then, um, I think Scott is the master of modesty because he's won numeral Emmy Awards for his reporting at NBC. So he's really a, a big star, a TV star. Um, so, okay, so when, okay, I, I, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. Um, I have been also a TV journalist um, for Reuters TV and CCTV and BBC in the past decade. That was my age, my God. Um, um, and now uh, I'm the CEO and founder of my own setup, a media setup that, um, Big media that connects Silicon Valley with China, and so in terms of data journalism, we know that it has been an indispensable part of journalism, and um, I'm sure you heard about you know like we've seen ups and downs of data journalism in the past years. Um, if you heard about the Panama Papers, you know that is an amazing example of how data journalism worked. Hundreds of reporters from around the world going through millions of files, and and in the end, they have this shocking exposure. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into details about this, but then you, you guys can check it out. And, and that, the whole process has won the team uh, Pulitzer Prize. And that is the ups of digital journalism. Of course, the downs, everybody knows about it. Last year, the US election, almost all the major mainstream media use data journalism, and, and what did the poll tell us? And then in the end, we got Donald Trump. So, um, so I would like to just, we go into these details a little bit later, so I would like to, um, you know, just throw this question openly to AK and Scott. You know, how, how, does, how has data journalism, or the way that people, you know, like the, the data science is used, uh, changing the way you work in marketing agencies and also in newsrooms? Sure. I'll go first. Uh, from a marketing perspective, you know, our agency perspective, we, you know, it's nowadays as many of you guys probably realize that, you know, the focus has really shifted and continues to shift towards how data can uh, really attribute to ROI, right? And so we've been using that, taking it a step further, and really getting insightful uh, information in terms of human behavior, right? What are what are people actually? You know, thinking, what are they feeling, um, which actually then translates into why they're acting and you know doing taking some of the actions with marketing that's the way that they are, right? So that's been a big, um, you know, really a big differentiating factor for us, but also a huge advantage to provide more attribution towards really the bottom line and you know helping with ROI for our clients. In kind of similar way for journalism. Uh, you know, our, our model has always been, and, and unfortunately still is today, we expect you to be sitting on your couch, uh, actually right now, uh, watching the news. And, and as we know, if you're ever driving around at five or six o'clock surrounded by traffic, uh, a, a great majority of, of us, whether we are professionals or parents or, or whatever, are not watching, the, you know, are not sitting on our couches at five and six. 
Uh, so how do we reach out and find people, not to mention how do we find stories? And uh, what I hear the most is, how did, and I'm sure you heard this, how did we ever do this before Google and Twitter? How did we find uh, information and, and data? And so it's, it's used both to, to track down stories and, and try to verify stories, but also to try to figure out where people are and, and who's watching. And before, we would just assume that everybody in the world was watching our five o'clock news because they love NBC. Um, now we know, of course, that's not true, that people are not necessarily even watching television. So how to find out who's on their phones when and, and who's on Snapchat or Twitter or Facebook Live or Periscope. Um, and, and to try to reach those people, uh, in other words, not on our time, but on their time. And especially any of you who have teenagers will know uh, your teenagers may be very, very dialed in to what's going on in the world around them. Um, but they may never read a newspaper or watch a newscast. Uh, so how are they getting it? It's because they're on their phones and their devices absorbing news. And, and we need to figure out and use data how to reach them uh, at their own time and at their own pace. And are there any new tools and or technology that you guys are using um, versus before? I wanted to actually mention one more thing about the last question. Um, so one additional thing I think makes kind of a little bit more sense here, with Scott specifically, is that we can use data and index data for news programs when we want to advertise for our clients to see that, okay, is the spot that Scott is actually reporting on, is that indexing higher for our target audience versus other places? It'll also give us an idea of how good Scott is, right? <laughs> This actually is the most interesting thing to me. Uh, our station, you know, maybe to your frustration, and, and all news, you know, we go over the easy thing, if something's on fire or if there's a crime, and we know that doesn't do well with young people. They're just not interested in a crime happening several cities away. But I've seen engagement uh, with a story, maybe even a review of a new iPhone on, say, a Periscope or something, that's triple our newscast. And I have a feeling not only is the number bigger, but the number you like to see of young, wealthy people you know, um, and we are woefully short in, in absorbing that data. We need to learn more about that uh, and, and act on that, I think, even more. I agree. And I also want to just add to that point, and in that case, how easy is data to be manipulated by people who really understand the art of, you know, data journalism or data science? Yeah, so, um, now, with Vicky's other question in regards to you know, incorporating some of the data. What we've done with the agency is that we've, been, you know, we've brought in a platform uh, which is essentially a neuromarketing. It's a biometric uh, platform. Uh, we test it using advanced neuroscience uh, technology. So essentially, what that means more in layman's terms, uh, in our industry, you know, basically in our world with marketing, it's all about engaging with our consumers, right? And so what we wanted to do, and we've done is bringing that human element into advertising. So with our platform, we use facial expression analysis, eye tracking, um, and as well as kind of skin conductance, almost like a polygraph. So we are able to literally, you know, understand why are consumers, you know, acting, reacting, behaving the way that they are, uh, to whether it's a TV commercial, whether it's a digital ad, um, print ad, etc. Uh, so that's you know one form where we've actually incorporated that platform, um, and again, it's all around that data science, and I would, I would say human science. I like the polygraph. <laughs> I like that. And, and as far as data manipulation, I mean, I think we would we in our business need to know more about that. And um, you know, maybe you brought up the, uh, the election, and I mean, news networks, the New York Times got that so incredibly wrong. And you know, people even now are still blaming Facebook or the Russians or the Russians using Facebook or you know whatever it is. But somehow, I mean, I think we're culpable as well. Just we misread it. We didn't know what we were doing. Um, perhaps we needed to hire AK before we said exactly. you know who's going to win the election. But for all the data coming in, I think we learned a humbling lesson that night and ended a few times since that data is great, but you really have to know how to read it. And I don't know that we're reading it correctly. And also, um, in terms of data, it could be used as a story itself, telling the story, and also you can use it as a tool. So, how does it um, how does it apply in in, in your day to day um, reporting in the newsroom at NBC? Well, I, it's it's applied to a to a certain extent. Um, 
if, if there's something you know on fire three blocks away, we're just going to go there. Um, and, and that's uh, sort of old school breaking news journalism. Um, but to try to work on something and, and reach out to clients and try to get the right people to, to you know, um, give us the right information about, uh, you know, that's really where, where data comes in. And again, if we're reading it right, it can be very helpful. And if we're finding the right sources, uh, we can gain an advantage uh, over the other stations. Um, and we have to learn uh, in order to get to that data how to use the machines correctly, how to reach out to young people on their phones, how to use search engines and, and social media correctly. Um, and, and it is, on our side, still a fairly new game, mm -hmm. and we're not, uh, we're not professionals at doing that. We're kind of guessing, to be honest. So it's a little bit like using the data and combined with, with years of you know, like instincts, journalistic instincts and experience. Right. I mean, I've worked on stories that are data-driven, and we'll get nine-tenths of the way there, and then a building will go on fire, and they'll say, forget everything you've done, we'd rather just see a building on fire. And that's very disappointing, but... You know, I understand that that's where that old school sort of instinct kicks in to just go cover something on fire. And actually, there has been a control, you know, a kind of controversy or the, like a conflict in terms of data journalism. And people do say that, you know, like sometimes the, the, you know, people can read the data wrong or you get the wrong data. You know, you just um, so so you you rather probably listen to your your own guts, your experience, and making sense of your own judgment instead of just depending greatly on a bunch of data. Right, and what we are accused of, and I understand this, is, is having bias. That's, that's a big term in our industry. And, and I would ask, AK, hey, hey, is there a way to filter bias? I don't think we have one, and I think we fall victim to that quite often. How can a professional data wrangler um, uh, somehow weed that out so that you're not just finding the data you want, I guess? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, it, yeah, especially from you know your neuroscience right, kind right. of perspective. No, absolutely. So, I, I think, uh, and that's really kind of the crux of how, what we're doing. I'll give you guys a little bit of a, you know, some of you might be familiar with uh, the statistics, but basically it's from consumers. 95% of human decision making is done subconsciously, right? And when we think about data, and you know, especially with marketing outreach and consumer outreach, 95% of that is actually focused on conscious human behavior, not the subconscious. That's really the crux behind why people are behaving the way that they are. So that being said, what we're trying to do is really objectify that element, right? By understanding, okay, well, you know what? I might think that you know this ad is doing great, or you know for X Y Z reason because I have data that backs it up, but really I'm putting an additional answer to that why question. You know, why is it really doing well as opposed to just looking at data, but why is it doing well in terms of real emotions, right? Like what is motivating people to behave the way they do? So I think that's really what has helped us. Yeah. We're so, still trying to figure out why one tweet does really well and one doesn't. Exactly, so just go underneath the bottom. And okay, so just one last question before we wrap up, because time is such an interesting topic. Um, so what do you what do you see the future of data journalism and data science in terms of journalism? How far can technology take us? Um, uh, I, I think it can take us very far. I, I think if, if we do a better job at using it, uh, there will be two things we'll do better. We'll, we'll eliminate some of the bias that, that I admit we have and, and use the data uh, to, to help find source, uh, sources and help find stories <laughs> and help better inform the public. And by using technology, we'll actually be able to reach out to the public we are in danger right now. I mean, the average age of someone watching a newscast is um, is old. I mean, older than anyone in this room is probably the average age. Um, and yet, do we just let the business go away and, and literally die off? Or do we use technology to reach out to younger viewers and say, here's a way, uh, not just from Wired and from The Verge and from Recode, all terrific organizations, but here's a way from old journalists like NBC and The New York Times and ABC and CBS we have to reach out to them and say, we can do this, we can deliver you the news where you are and, and at your time. Um, and, uh, and if we do that successfully, I think we can succeed. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to communicate or discuss this issue more with us, and you could go to AK's you know, company's website, Crescendo, Crescendo, Agency. Crescendo Agency, and also follow Scott on his, tw on his Twitter, and watch his NBC News, and also <laughs> Check on our Vivi in the Valley, our show, and um, follow us on WeChat, Vivi Chang Guigu. 
Um, thank you very much for your time and hope you have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.